Do you want to be in it? Nah, I just like to say it. and has had five nervous breakdowns in the last four weeks. Uh, and uh, let me thank you. She is here today. Give God some praise. Uh, for her. Yes. And, yes. and my brother. The yes. and my brother. Uh, our daughters uh, live down the hall from each other at BAMU. Uh, so I got to pull her aside because I'm, I'm seeing some patterns and I need to make sure it ain't just me. Uh, it's just September and I've got two money calls already uh, to put on a rattler card. I'm trying to figure out, is anybody eating in the cafeteria? So help, help me, uh, Dr. Heavenly. I want to pray for you on today. I want to pray for uh, what your ears are going to hear and what your hearts are. This was uh, absolutely daunting and uh, overwhelming uh, because this is uh, amazingly, in the four years that I've been here, this is the very first conference we've had where there has been a registration. Who is also going to join us? Please turn your attention to the screen for Dr. Heavenly Kinds. Dr. Heavenly Kimes. Ladies and esteemed guests, let's welcome the illustrious Dr. Heavenly Kimes, a Miami native and a beacon of inspiration. Dr. Kimes began her journey at Florida A&M University and reached the zenith at Mahari Medical College. With over two decades of dedication to dentistry, she's in her weird name, continuously expanding her knowledge and holding memberships prestigious dental organizations. She's not just an exceptional dentist, but a compassionate spirit. Known for her unwavering dedication to her patients and her gentle touch, Dr. Kimes has created a welcoming and understanding atmosphere in her clinic, supported by her wonderful staff. Today, we honor her resilience, her pioneering spirit, and her unrelenting dedication. Dr. Kimes, thank you for setting unparalleled standards of excellence and being a guiding light for all of us. And I'm going to tell y'all I'm honored 
and, and I too, y'all know I love my man, I'm thinking about my man, right? That God gave me everything I wanted to stand with heavenly for 20, 30 years. Well, first, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be able to talk to you guys. Um, and I, I, you know, first, want to give an honor to God because I know a lot of people say that when you're talking in church, but that's really the key. I, you know, and I know we're sitting up here, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, that really is key. So, how do I, or how does a man be with a woman like Heavenly? One, it's pretty easy, you know? I'm a man with confidence, I'm a man with strength. I don't have to be the center of the stage. To, to know that I'm a value. So to have an incredibly strong, uh, vibrant, popular uh, woman like this and, and to be a, a man that still feels secure is because I've always felt that way. You know, I've always had this strong relationship with God. I've always been prepared. The other thing is, I'm in for the long haul, you know? Um, and something I was thinking about, we, we talk about Nowadays, it's, it's really popular to talk about bags and Hermes bags and all this. I think a lot of people forget you got a great bag in determination and consistency. If you have a man that has that, that's worth way more than any Hermes bag. Because that's going to keep on paying you every single day. And it's going to keep on supporting you every day. So, you know, don't be the Hermes bag. Just be the consistent, determined man that's going to get up and do what you got to do every day. Because really, women don't, don't, some women don't see it, but that's the true value in a man. We are consistent. We can stay in there and put up with things and do things, you know, no matter how tough it is. And that's the beauty of being a man. We're going to be there. And he made it sound like it's real tough, baby. Listen, listen, but no, seriously, I want to know how do you stay? Be lonely or something. We, I know I'm a stronger man with her. I know she's a stronger woman. And y'all can see it. I mean, you know, look at all that's happened in these just a few years. I mean, we've been on Married in Medicine for 10 years, but even before that, she was always Dr. Evelyn. You know, she was always this, this successful woman who's going to make it happen no matter what. And now our goal is to see if we can try to get those those, those ideas out to help others. You know, so that's what we're doing. That's amazing. I didn't know what she was going to say, but you know what? He be getting in my game. I'm hype. He ain't. Listen, I'll tell you, this kind of work. This, this works because I am my, I wish I could be like him. I wish I could just talk my tone and really say what I want to say and be firm and this and the other thing. But he is amazing. And I'm going to tell you this. And I don't know how well it's going to be received. But even though I'm a doctor and I graduated and I did all this and ran all these multi million dollar businesses, y'all don't know that they don't wear the medicine, but joined back to Henry University, I know I'm a wife. At the end of the day, I saw I saw a video blog at him on Instagram with a lady that was an ER doctor. She came home and cooked for her man. I'm that wife. Like, you know what I mean? Just because you married and you're successful and you a boss, I'm not the boss at the house. Did y'all know when he got me together on Married Medicine? Because the people thought that I ran a relationship. Because I talk. And he don't really say nothing. I ain't running nothing, y'all. And I would, I would not want it to run anything. A woman wants to be prayed for, protected in the body. So 
based on that, I was talking to Carlos King. Anybody know Carlos King and Quad? They all told me, and they even told me too, mix the mess with the message, right? Get in there, talk about the mess, and then tell the people how to make money from it, how to do what they're doing. Because I'm an opinion that all publicity is good, and you can use it for the greater good. So you use your platform. I feel like, yeah, social uh, uh, reality TV, negative con connotation. <clears throat> But I think that because you have the platform, you also have the obligation to get out there and do positive things. More so than anybody else, I have an obligation to give back and do positive things. Because we put some mess out there in the world. <laughs> so, Ken, you want to leave the people with anything? Well, I guess I would. I want to. I guess I always want to be an advocate for the men out there because you guys are here to learn about business, finance, relationships, and stuff like that. If you're a man out there and you're married to an incredibly strong woman like I am. That's a blessing. That's an opportunity for you to work on your, yourself as well. A lot of us men, we, we deal with a lot of things, uh, pressures from, from everywhere in the world. But the thing is, you can accomplish all that you want to accomplish. You can speak it into existence, and you keep on speaking it, no matter what anyone else says. So I try to my best to use negative things to work for the better good. So I always take something negative and try to turn it back around and give me energy do something positive. I guess the thing that I would want to say to all you guys is, we're not living some sort of magical life here. We're living a life that is just following the principles of God. If you speak these things into existence, they're just gonna happen. I have at least enough faith as a mustard seed, and that's all I need. I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna to continue to be successful, be a good husband, I'm be a great father, um, I'm being inspiration to you guys, whether I talk a lot or, or a little bit, it's still going to make a difference. So thank you for the opportunity. Amen, amen. And I want to say thanks again to Jamal because he believed in us enough to even bring us here. You know, a lot of church probably, but you know what I mean? But he understands reality TV. But we, we want to thank him. He's doing an amazing job with his church, and we got to start coming back in church because we haven't really been since the pandemic. Cause you know what I mean? But we stay right up the street around the corner. So we need to come to church, Daddy. We need to give cash to the bank, Daddy. Pull out your wallet. Put your wallet out. And give back to the church. That's right. Guys, I hope y'all have been blessed with yeah, It's just like a sad end. Mm -mm, I don't need anything to eat. Where you survive, that's not going to make us.